Dave Palumbo for RX Muscle Supplement Science. All right, guys, I'm going to be doing a number of uh, installments over the next couple of weeks of shows where I'm going to explain the science of supplements, nutritional ones, uh, the ones that we get in the health food store, the ones we get through the gray market, whatever it is that's of interest to the community, I will address. And I think one of the biggest, uh, I guess you could say most confusing topics out there is protein science and protein supplements. Uh, there's a, a bevy of whey supplements out there on the market, casein supplements on the market, egg protein on the market, um, milk protein, which is technically, uh, you know, casein and whey. Uh, there's vegan proteins. There's branch chain amino acids. There's essential amino acids. Pretty much, if you want to simplify things real easily, whey protein isolate is the purest, most potent form of a food supplement. Now, this is an important point to make. Whey isolate is a complete food. It's, it's whey protein. It's from milk. It's not people putting amino acids into a bottle or putting, you know, all kinds of uh, different minerals or vitamins and shaking it up. This is actually extracted directly from milk. And because of the new sophisticated filtration uh, techniques that we have nowadays, we could actually run whey protein through a filter and get everything out of it except the whey isolate, the, the whey protein itself. So that's why they call it a whey isolate because you're isolating the whey from everything else that's in it. What else is in it? Lactose, predominantly milk sugar, that's a huge one. And we know that what happens when you consume a lot of lactose, especially if you're an adult, or, and most adults are lactose intolerant, you wind up fermenting the stuff, you get gassy, you get diarrhea, you malabsorb the protein you're eating. So we don't want that stuff in there, we get that out. It also pulls all the fat out of there. Okay, usually what you're left with if you have a good whey protein isolate is trace carbs, very, very small amounts, maybe one gram, one and a half grams. If you start having like four, five, six grams per serving of carbs, then you're not getting all the left and it's not a really good quality whey isolate. It's, and it really technically shouldn't be a whey isolate at all. More than likely it's a blend where they're putting whey concentrate with whey isolate. So when you go to a store and you buy a whey protein supplement, whether you buy my isolize or not, doesn't matter to me. I'm not here trying to sell it to you. You want a good quality whey isolate, and that could be used in place of food meals, okay? So instead of eating six food meals a day, which is a pain in the neck, and you have to cook, and it's more expensive, you can maybe two or three of those meals do shakes. And what you would do is you would take your whey isolate, and you would combine it with some sort of a fuel source. Now, why are you going to do that? Well, you don't want to just take whey isolate alone, you know, maybe unless you're dieting, because what's going to invariably happen is some of that protein will get used for f energy in the body, okay? So you always want to eat, when you're, when you're consuming food, you always want to have a fuel source plus the protein. So, you know, I, I have a lot of my clients combined, you know, whey isolate with almond butter or all natural peanut butter, macadamia nut oil. Um, you, you could, or you can mix it, you know, post-workout with, with a nice carb source, a high molecular weight carbohydrate, like my Carbolize, uh, for instance, Vitargo, the glycogen, there's a million out there that you can, that you can use. Um, so what that does is it enables you to have a food replacement. Now, when we talk about uh, amino acid formulas, like the branch chain amino acid, you know, or essential amino acids that, that they have out on the market now, what, what we're talking about is someone's taking individualistic amino acids and they're putting it into a formula arbitrarily coming up with you know different ratios sometimes they got a three to one ratio of the three branch chain amino acids sometimes they have a two to one to one ratio they got different formulas that they put out there but what they're basically doing is taking predominantly the branch chain amino acids okay leucine isoleucine and valine and they're putting it in high amounts and they're putting a you know artificial sweetening uh, flavoring system in there it's carb free it's fat free and basically, you're just getting amino acids, and it depends which ones the companies use. Some companies only use the branch chains. Uh, some companies use all the essential, the eight essential amino acids, okay? Uh, the most, I guess, popular ones on the market are the branch chain amino acids. And you see people drinking these things all day long. I see it during people's contest diets. They think, oh, that doesn't count. It's not, there's no calories in there. And then what happens is they stop losing weight because they're putting protein into their body. Even though it's not a complete protein, like a food, it's still protein. It's still, it does have calories in it. 
However, the difference is, once again, if you drink branched-chain amino acid formulas all day long, you're throwing off the ratio of those three amino acids to all the other amino acids in the body. Now, there's, there's about 20 to 21, we're, we're not really sure exactly, there might even be more amino acids, okay, that, that comprise protein. So when you basically break down whey protein, chicken protein, meat protein, you get amino acids, and there's about 20 different ones. Um, if you're only putting three into a shake and you're drinking that all day long, what about the other 17 or 18? Obviously, your ratios are skewed. Now, that's not to say that branch chain amino acid formulas don't have a place in bodybuilding, and they do. And I know a lot of people think that I don't, I don't like them. I, I do like them, but they're not used properly. What are they good for? Well, post-workout, after you train, whether it be cardio or you do uh, weight training, you're breaking down muscle tissue. The switch inside your body, okay, also known as mTOR, that turns on protein, the protein machinery, the repair machinery in the body, is flipped on, the switch is turned on by high branched-chain amino acid residues, specifically leucine. Leucine will turn on the protein machinery. Now, if you don't pump in more protein, okay, whether it be whey or, you know, I like to use whey because it gets in fast, but you can use any protein. So if you don't pump more protein in, in addition to those branched chain amino acids, specifically leucine, then your body can't repair itself. But the switch that turns on protein machinery in the body is flipped on by leucine, okay? Or to a lesser degree, the other two branched chain amino acids. That's undeniable. So post-workout, even, you know, you could, you could take some branched chains if you wanted to, uh, if you didn't want to have to gulp down a whey isolate shake, you know, you might want to take some branch chains and then go home an hour later and, and, and have, you know, uh, and have some food or even a half hour later. So uh, if you wanted to drink it after cardio, it would be not necessarily the worst idea, especially if you're not dieting for a show. If you're dieting for a show, I don't like to start put, pumping it in. Off season, it's great between meals, okay? I would recommend two servings per day. When you start getting into three, four, five servings a day, I think, you, I think now you're throwing off the ratios of the amino acids. Um, some people drink them during their workout. It's not necessarily the worst thing, uh, especially in the off season. I don't have a problem with that. Pre-contest, I wouldn't do that because we don't want to start feeding in amino acids that theoretically can be turned into sugar and used for fuel. We want your body to use stored fat you know, for fuel. Um, so they're not terrible before. Uh, right before you train either. You know, if you wanted to drink an amino acid drink right before you went to the gym, I'd probably be more in favor of that than any other time because now you're putting some amino acids into the bloodstream and your body can utilize those while you're training. If you ate a huge meal right before you went to the gym, it's just going to lay in your stomach. So the difference between a whole protein supplement like whey isolate versus a branched chain amino acid product is one is a whole food one is just a bunch of amino acids in a bottle, okay? And if you're going to use amino acids, make sure you look for fermented amino acids. Those are amino acids that are, that are basically synthesized from bacteria expressing them rather than the usual way, the cheap way, which is where they, they go to the hair salons in, in China and they, get all, they buy up all the sweep, swept up hair and they use the hair, to, they digest the hair and that's where they get the amino acids from. I know it sounds gross, but it's the truth. So, Look for products that say fermented amino acids on them. I hope you guys are enjoying you know, all the information that we do provide to you. If you guys have uh, recommendations for topics, feel free to email me at huge285 at AOL.com. I love to do these segments. I love to do more of them. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe to the video below uh, or subscribe to the channel below and then give us a couple of likes because that inspires us to do more. For now, though, I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Supplement Science Update.